Awesome, man. Yeah, it's awesome to meet you, dude. I love your work. Yeah. Uh, we've been trying to do this for so long. Oh, man, tell me about it. Like, Tops kept, kept on giving me release dates, and I'd say, yeah, yeah, let's do it on the release date. And then I'd get an email from um, Brandon, like, a day before going, surprise, your card's coming out today. And uh, Yeah. Awesome, man. Also, uh, Matt just popped in. I want uh, him to say what's up real quick. What's up, Matt? How's it going? Hey, man, how's it going? Yeah. Big Matt, fan Matt. of your work. Oh, thank you, man. I was just looking at all the posters you've done on your site and oh yeah, uh, stuff you've done. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Um, this mat, my mat, uh, helps kind of run, keep everything running here in the studio, which we're we're in my in my studio currently. Oh, nice. And uh, he helps with uh, you know filling orders, basically everything. Um, everything that he's done besides painting, uh, which is what I try <laughs> All the stuff that keeps you from drawing. Yeah. Yeah. He also um, is the one that turned me on to Palm Springs, which I oh. love. And I've seen it like probably half a dozen times in the last two months. I just love it so much. And um, it's like one of those movies that like anytime I meet someone that hasn't seen it, I'm like, oh, we got to watch it together. And then we'll watch it. And then like, I'll immediately be like, okay, now we have to watch it again. Because the second time you watch it, it's like, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. I watched it. I think I watched it like six times in the space of a week. Like when I was yeah. doing the public search, trying to get all of the, um, trying to get like all the details right on it. Um, but it's not been released in the UK. So I haven't been able to watch it since. Oh, so yeah. I watched it. Yeah. Six times in a week. And then like loads of people have been getting in touch about it and like just getting really excited. And I yeah. want to, I just kind of want to watch it again. But like the weird thing was that when I, um, so the first time I watched it, I knew literally nothing about it. All I was told, um, cause Mondo got in touch and asked me if they, if I wanted to do the poster and you know, I sort of said yes on site. Cause you know, those guys tend to know what movies suit me. Yeah. But all they said was like, it's a rom-com with, Andy Samberg in it and I was like yeah. okay cool and so I started watching it and like the first 20 minutes it was fine like you know it was a sad sack dude and I was like ah oh, okay it's this again um and then he goes into the cave and like I've got my notebook that I was right because I was writing down notes while I was drawing it and while I was watching it and like I just really wrote what the fuck yeah and, so, and it just kind of blew me away and then from that point I was like oh I get it now like this is the movie it is and yeah. suddenly it all makes sense but it was it was so great to see something like that and genuinely be surprised by a movie and not know where it was going. And I mean, it's the type of movie that you watch it the second time and you pick up on all new stuff once you kind of understand the concept. It's like yeah. a, it's a whole different movie the second time. Yeah, because his whole um, like demeanor at the start suddenly makes a lot more sense. It's like oh. he's been trapped in this world for who oh. knows how long. Right, right. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I love it. Um, Did you get a copy of the poster? I haven't. You uh, want one? I want. I would love one. Oh, just send me your address. I'll send you one. I, they sent me like a whole bunch of comps. So if you want one, just like hit me your address and I'll send you one. Absolutely. That'd be cool. rad. I appreciate that very much. I literally, I literally got one. Um, so I, I, I have a guy who does all my shipping. Um, and what I usually do is I, he's not in the same town as me, so I tend to sign it and then ship it to him. Yeah. And he gives on to customers. Um, and I missed a signature in one of them. Uh, and I had an email from the guy who bought it, and he was kind of disappointed. So he sent it back to me to sign. But in the meantime, I sent him one, which I signed and, you know, sent back out to him. So I've, I've literally got one back in the mail this week. So that's I have a copy sitting here. So I'll just put my yeah. signature on it. I don't even have to take yeah, it out of the screen. That's huge. I really appreciate that. I love oh, no it. Cool, man. I love it, man. Um, and top. So next I saw your teaser. It looks like uh, Bob Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. And when does uh, that come out? I think Thursday. Okay, great. So this this video this is going to air on Friday. So everybody watching, buy the Bob Gibson now because it's available. Yeah, I hope so. Um, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I was a little late getting it in, so um, I think it was due in on Friday, and I didn't get it until Monday. So I know it's a couple of days behind. Um, oh, we might. Um, I wonder if we're dropping together. Because I have a car. Oh, I think mine's on Friday. I had the same thing. I had a due date of last Friday, mm -hmm. and. I like confused the due date and the art drop date. Yeah. And so like I didn't have it done. And then Brandon messaged me on Monday and was like, where's, where's your George Brett at? So yeah, I had the same. I had an email from Brandon just asking, is it coming? I was like, Oh yeah. yes, it is. It's coming right now. Yeah. Um, 
but the um to be honest i haven't had any i've only had two issues with cards um getting like notes from tops mm -hmm. so on the um the mark mcguire they they wanted to know like why the that in the background mm -hmm. um so i had to kind of give a note explaining it and that was cool and then on the uh ted williams i think so you know i did the like the little squadron flight badge in the corner yeah uh, originally it had his name and then red Sox. And I think they were a little wary about having like MLB um, branding alongside kind of military branding. So we right. took that out and just changed the outfield. And it, you know, it, yeah. it was a good, it, it was a good change. Like it totally made sense. But like, apart from that, I've been pretty lucky. I haven't had any like major notes from, uh, from MLB. That's awesome. Yeah. I had one, uh, just one revision. And that was also on my Mark McGuire. I had originally had uh, his Jersey number be number 41, which he wore for the team USA. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the license for the Team USA card um, that I was kind of like alluding to, so they just had me swap the number to. Yeah. Uh, but it was oh, cool. Frank, Frank Thomas as well. I had to take out the browning on oh, the. Yeah, on the the album. Like, yeah, yeah, like everyone's had to do that though. So you know, that's. I think we've all had to change that card. That's awesome, man. Dude, I remember like. It's hard to pick favorites because like there's so much good work of all the artists, but your Ricky Henderson was just bananas. Um, and that was like pretty early on. I think that was like your first or second card. It was the second one I did, but it was the first one that released. Um, so I did Jita first, mm -hmm. but I think there was some like hold up in like getting the final approval for him to be in the project. So it was, yeah. Two, yeah. yeah, it was all kind of agreed, but I think there needed to be something signed. So like, yeah, I did the Jita one first. Cause I think, a bunch of people had like two cards come out before I'd released my first because my G2 was, just being, was supposed to be in the first like batch. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my Henderson came out first. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. That's the one that people sort of really like early doors kind of like latched onto and, and really into. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like it's so nostalgic to like 80s retro, mm -hmm. like arcade, uh, neon. It's just, that card is amazing, man. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. It was, um, I was still kind of finding my feet with that one and like it's been a real up and down for me this this whole project in terms of trying to find a sort of style or like some kind of consistency because like you know i look at guys like you um and like say grotesque and um sophia chang and you've all got like like a really distinctive look mm -hmm. and so like your cards feel so consistent um, and I found with mine, like I did the first three, so um, Jeter, Henson, Griffey, and they, they were quite similar in terms of the sort of design elements I was using on the page. And then I think I, I tried again with Frank Thomas and that one didn't feel quite as successful for me for whatever reason. And then I thought, oh God, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna kind of get bored if I just keep like repeating the same like visual tricks for 20 cards, it's, it's not going to keep me interested. And then, so Clemente was the one after that. And I kind of tried to switch it up a bit. And then I had uh, Tony Gwynn, which is the one where I sort of let loose a little bit and just said, cause those, those early cards were super um, like referential to the original cards in terms of the layout. Like they're exactly the same. Like some of the details in there are, some of the details have been like dropped out, but like in terms of like the borders and the text placement, everything is the same. But then with Tony Gwynn, I just kind of said, fuck it. I'm just gonna like create something awesome. And, and that was the one that it kind of like, the switch flipped. And from there it's been, I've just been trying to do something fun with every card. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I wanna actually, I'm gonna pull up. And what I could do is in the final video that people see, I can like overlay some of these cards, but uh, let's see. see. Mm -hmm sports cards uh let's see here artist images here we go matt taylor yeah the gwyn is wild it's awesome yeah awesome. i kind of God, it feels that. like that was the point at which i just went ah let's just let's just go yeah. for it yeah you know, it's funny when, when I was looking at like your first, um, I guess like four cards. So it was Ricky, Jeter, Griffey, and then Frank. Yeah. I was actually, I like convinced and I, and I was talking to like people on my team and other people I talked to that I thought you were doing like, um, like a color fade throughout the entire set, like thinking ahead of like going from like one color all, all the way across. 
and I was like, oh my God, that's genius. I'd never thought of like how these were gonna look as like kind of a complete set. Um, and then there were obviously a few like curveballs in there that I'm like, oh, maybe that's not what he's doing, but. Yeah, well, you know what? That was kind of my plan. Um, initially, I, I sort of thought I wanted to do um, a sort of consistent evolving palette. Yeah. So that it would be like one carried over to the next, yeah. the next, to the next. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I thought I was saying. I think, yeah, it, it, it started out that way. And then I kind of got in my own head a little bit about it. And I wanted to, um, I d like, I don't mind having uh, like a brief or like, you know, guidelines to work to, but I find if I set them too far in advance, I kind of bore myself totally. because I, because I'm looking at like, you know, cause they, those cars were done in what, uh, February, January, February. And I was thinking, God, I'm going to be doing this like till November. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the interest for me is going to sort of wane. And so right. that was when I started trying to throw, throw different things in the mix. And then the other thing which really, which was like a real big impact on me was um, when Keith's um, like insane sale happened. Yeah. And, you know, cause the, the print runs were sort of, you know, they were, they were pretty steady. They were kind of between, you know, 1200, 2000. And there were a couple like spiked up and down, which was, was fine. And then suddenly you have like a hundred thousand mm -hmm. sale. And so in my head, I was thinking, I then started looking at my cards and thinking, Oh my God, what's, what's working here? What's going to make people want to buy it in the way that they have before, mm. which is kind of like kiss of death to an artist when you're sort of second guessing yourself and you're thinking, how do I, how do I make the maximum out of this? Yeah. And it was almost better when everything started like then dropping back down to more sensible levels. It was, it was incredibly freeing because I thought, well, it, it doesn't really matter what I do. Mm -hmm. Like the sales are going to be what they are. And, and that was, yeah, kind of around Tony Gwynn, Cal Ripken. Um, I'm just, I'm going to drag up my own cards now so I can look at them because. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I think like the bump was also like a lot of speculation and it was almost like it was inverse where people saw the secondary market prices of some of the less popular mm -hmm. cards. And then people were speculating and thinking, oh, this card's not going to sell well. So I'm going to buy a ton of them because I'm just going to make a bunch of money, a bunch of quick cash by like flipping yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think as soon as like, as soon as the consumers started just buying cards based on like print run and resale value speculation, like it doesn't really have anything to do with the art at that point. Yeah. And I agree with you that I think now that we're kind of, we're kind of in a level spot again, mm -hmm. I think that, um, the people that are buying the cards for the most part are like collectors of the set, not necessarily yeah. the flippers, um, which I think is good. Uh, it's, I mean, it's been a wild ride, man. Yeah, this is absolutely insane. It's been a lot. Like I, so I'm pretty new to like this whole world of um, like baseball cards and sports, like sport art, basically is something that I've not really touched on before. I did a, so I did a, a like a very small contribution to the that campaign for the U.S. Open last year, um, tennis U.S. Open, and um, I think that was what top saw, which got me uh, on board for this project. But like I, I've been to a baseball match because my girlfriend is big into baseball and she took me to a game because I'd never been to one. Um, but like that was my, that was the limit to my interaction with baseball. So this has all been entirely new. And like, it was really, it was really nice, especially at the start of the project, there was so much excitement about it and the collectors were all super, just super nice. Um, and the vibe of the whole project was just really encouraging and it made me very glad to be, to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it got a bit more hostile when, you know, print runs started going up and down and yeah. you know, people weren't, I don't know, they were, people were starting to get more into the like money-making side of it, which, which was a bit of a shame, but like by and large, I've had so many nice interactions with, with people as a result of this project. It's been, mm -hmm. it's been a really, a really nice experience on the whole. Yeah. Um, let's see. I also want to pull up your website. So how are you, how have you navigated uh, artist autos uh, in turn? Like the, so you saying the money-making side, and I think you were talking about the flippers, but like, obviously there's also the artistic side of yeah. it, like selling the autographs and kind of navigating that, which has been also a wild ride uh, and very interesting. What, uh, what has been your like process and thoughts on that? I mean, 
Um, so I didn't realize that, um, I realized that artists also were going to be a thing. Um, like they gave us contracts and stuff. They're like, okay, you can buy X number of cards mm -hmm. for yourself if you want to. Right. And I, in my brain, I was thinking, yeah, like I'll buy four or five just for the archive. Um, mm -hmm. It didn't even occur to me that people would want my signature on them. Mm -hmm. So I didn't buy any, um, I think it was only by Griffey. Even Griffey, I only bought like like 10 or 15 of. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really, really kind of late to it because I wasn't, I wasn't super following the social media side of things. Like I follow a bunch of you guys on, um, on Instagram, but I don't, I don't like delve into the stories a lot. So I missed a lot of people making their announcements about artist autos and the different kind of tiering of signatures and stuff. And like when I do posters, I get, copies which i sign and sell and um it just it just didn't occur to me and so then suddenly i was kind of really behind the kind of really behind everyone else um so i think it was only around it was like griffey and um frank thomas and clemente i actually started properly buying some but even then I, i've only been doing editions of like 25 mm -hmm. um because i don't want to i kind of want them to have some value in terms of there not being a lot of them um and also I've, I've bought some which i've given to my agent and he's going to be selling which are signed but not numbered and i think once the whole project is released they're gonna they're gonna drop their mm -hmm. like allocation of, of signed cards as well but mm -hmm. i kind of i didn't want to go too hard on it mm -hmm. um, because especially at that time there was a bit of a like delay in terms of the cards being printed because you know yeah. Tops, Tops didn't know what hit them with those yeah. huge ones. And I was very wary about not wanting to sell artist copies until they were in hand. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I spent a good couple of grand on cards before I even had anything in. Mm -hmm. And all the time I'm kind of watching the, the secondary market kind of go up and up and up. And then just before I got like my first box of cards in, I was going to sign a number. The, the sales went straight down. Yeah. Um, so I've got, I'm, I'm just going to lift it up. So just uh, there, mm -hmm. that is all my APs, <laughs> which I've got to sign and uh, sign a number. So that's everything from, I think, uh, I'm just looking now, uh, George Brett onwards. Yeah. So George Brett onwards, that's all of mine down there, which I need to, the other thing is I don't like selling them till I've signed them. Sure. Um, and I haven't signed them yet. And so I don't want to pre-sell them because like in addition to tops, I'm like, I'm uh, designing a board game at the moment. I've got like three movie posters in different stages of things. Um, I've got an ad campaign, which is sort of maybe, maybe going to happen. So taking the time to sit down and like unpack, sign, repack, re-sticker, fold, put into like packages to ship. I mean, I can do about 50 in, if I start packing, doing about like seven in the evening by midnight, I can do 50. And it's, I don't have the time at the moment, which is, which sounds really awful because I know people want them and it's, yeah, but there's money to be made there. But um, I mean, you've got the right idea, you've got an assistant and you've got like a team. I think that's, that's the way forward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting. Um, I was very fortunate in that the people on my team were also like very hyper aware of baseball cards in that market. Mm -hmm. So um, like the idea to sell autos came from internally and we decided to do it like very, literally with my first card and yeah. that card, Nolan Ryan, I had bought 70 of them. Mm -hmm. um, and really I had originally just bought 10, like the first day at launch thinking the same thing. Oh, I'm going to keep these. And then uh, Tony was like, man, we should do like some artists, you know, autographed editions, we can sell them for X, Y, Z. I'm like, all right, well, we can try. So I bought 70 of those and like, they sold out so fast um, that I was like blown away. Yeah. And again, I mean, this is when we were kind of on this upward trajectory yeah. and then it was like Don Mattingly uh, also sold out not quite as fast because we bumped from like 70 artist autos to up to 200 mm -hmm. um, the max that Tops would let us um, yeah. buy at the time. Uh, and then they didn't sell out quite right, right away, but still like the price was really high. And then Jackie Robinson came out and we scaled the numbers back a little bit and then they sold out immediately. And like, and so it was like five cards in a row. Um, it was like, I, 
whatever we put up like sold out very quickly. Um, and obviously that has changed now that like the market's in a different spot, both in terms of like the prices for the autos um, are much, I think more like reasonable and, and make sense. Yeah. Uh, and we like, you know, with the print run of like my trout was like 75 K we did so many autos for that card and, and all these different tiers. And now like ever since then, we've kind of been coming down both in price and addition size. Yeah. Uh, but I feel really lucky that like, because of the team being that kind of tapped into how the sports uh, card kind of market works and what those collectors are looking for. Um, I was just really lucky to get on the ground floor and that helped. I mean, really like it helped to grow my business a ton this year. I, I, unlike you, like I don't have other contracts or other, other collaborations. I do individual commissions, which for the first time ever, I have a waiting list for that, which is awesome. Oh, that's but, outside of if I didn't have the tops project this year I don't know how I would have kept my studio and instead of like potentially having to like downsize and move out of my studio I've expanded and like the space that's next door on this side I also rent now which is kind of like shipping an office um, and then Matt who you met he and yeah. I have a podcast room which is a third room in the same building and so it really I would attribute a lot of that like opportunity for expansion just by like right place at the right time with the right people launching the autos when the market was hot. Um, and now it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a learning process. Um, mm -hmm. I also have like, like, you know, I know you have those boxes of cards. I have, I'm still sitting on a lot of cards um, that I've kind of reinvested in myself thinking like, well, this is hopefully going to be my first of many projects in this space. And so my first set of cards, you know, one, five, 10 years from now, I think will be worth a lot more than what I had to pay for it. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about what to do with with some of mine because I've, I've kept like five of each just for myself, yeah. um, some of which are going to friends. And, you know, as long as I have one of everything, once all of this is done, then I'll be happy because yeah. my flat's not that big. I haven't got enough room for like endless. I mean, it's already becoming a bit of a problem having just like boxes of stock. Yeah, uh, there was there was one where, week. Where are you located, by the way? Uh, I'm in Brighton. So down on the south coast of the UK, like you can see the sea just over there from my window. <laughs> Awesome. Super nice. I love that. Um, yeah, there was one week in the summer where I had, um, so I did an X-Men poster for Mondo, and I did the Palm Springs poster, and uh, something else. There was another print. I can't remember likely what it was. And then I had like 10 boxes of cards, and just my lounge was just full of stock. Oh, it was pin badges. It was pin badges for Mondo as well. Um, oh, and I'd done some t-shirts. I just, everything all came in in this one week, and I just, right. like, my my flat was just like a warehouse. Yeah. Um, my, so I've got two, um, two daughters who live with my ex-wife most of the time and they come to stay. And so when they came to stay, I was just kind of frantically sort of trying to like ferry them through the little corridors of like, just please don't touch that. Please don't touch that. That's worth a lot of money. Yeah. Um, like when my, when my young uh, eldest was, I think she was three, I did, a, uh, I did a Back to the Future poster for Mondo. And on the secondary market, they were going for like, so 150 bucks. Um, well, like I was selling my AP copies at 150. I think they were they were worth a bit more because I, I always try and price my AP slightly under like what the market is, so that people sort of feel like they're not being ripped off by the artist. Mm -hmm. I so I, I opened them and left them on the floor of my studio. Went downstairs to get a, a drink or something. I came back and she just had a hand of them and just gone crunch. Oh. <laughs> and you know she's she's the best but yeah. there was a bit of me looking at that thinking that's like 600 bucks worth of paper that you've just crumpled up yeah. well, now they're one of ones yeah yeah i guess so <laughs> she's drawn on some like in the past just like i remember getting a like a sharpie and just scribbling yeah. over something because again i wasn't paying attention so so this summer i've been very wary of like especially you know when it was at its peak and, and like you i um my my first four or five AP cards I did sold out like that, mm -hmm. but they you know you're looking at a good couple of thousand dollars worth of stock just sort of sit in there and it's like you please don't touch that you can play with anything else in the flat but and obviously yeah. the first thing they want to do is like oh look at these shiny plastic things let's, let's yeah. see what they are yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's almost better now they're worth less because I don't have to worry so much about them getting into the box right right no that makes sense. That's awesome. Um, hey, Matt, will you tap in for a second? You can ask your question. I want to run to the restroom.
Yeah. Matt has a question about movie Absolutely. posters. I'm going to use the rest. Oh. Yeah, no We're just doing a little tag team. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Blake. Hey, man. How's it going? Hey, what's up, Matt? Um, so, yeah, I actually have – I wrote down the questions I had for you. Oh, cool. Like, okay. Blake, ask these because I love your poster work and your work in general. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. But particularly your poster work. And I just mm -hmm. want to ask you, when you're watching a movie that you're designing a, a poster for, uh, you, you mentioned that you're taking notes or mm -hmm. at least for, the, for Palm Springs. What kind yeah. of what, what's going through your head as you're as you're watching that movie? Um, it, it depends. Uh, it kind of depends where I am in the process of of doing a poster for it. Um, I'm trying to think of some examples. So. Uh, so last summer I was doing a post of an end game. Um, and with that, I, it's really difficult because you go into a movie and you want to enjoy it. You just want to sit there and enjoy it as a fan. Yeah. But at the same time, like you can't stop the little bit of your brain kind of ticking over. Um, but what I try and do is I'll watch it the first time. Just, I'll just go and watch it and try and experience it as experience it like a, you know, a fan basically. And I think um, like I can never stop my brain doing its thing so like the second I came out of Endgame I thought oh I know what I'm going to do I know what the poster is going to be um but then I'd go I went back and watched it again so that I could sort of mentally make notes and obviously you can't really just sit there with a notepad in the cinema so there's a lot of kind of just keeping it up here until I can get outside and then I'll just kind of sit for like half an hour and just write down all the thoughts I've had and just do like little scribbles um which which aren't really intelligible to anyone but me like, I don't think anyone would be able to look at my sketches and sort of go, oh, that's, that's that poster. <laughs> um, they sort of, they make sense to me, but they don't really make sense to anyone else. But I, I tend to do a lot of my, um, a lot of my thought processes, I'll just write stuff down. Because um, I tend to, re I tend to remember words more than I'll remember pictures. So I'll write like a little description of what I'm, what I think I'm looking at or what I think that it's, it's almost like describing it to myself, essentially. Um, but I mean, I kind of have a policy now of doing of not um, doing posters for movies without having seen them, because um, the flip side of that is when Infinity War came out, I already had a finished poster in the bag, which was off with Marvel for approvals, and I went in to watch Infinity War, very happy, thinking like my work's done, I can sit and watch the movie, and I came out of it, and the first thing I thought was, well, I'm going to have to completely redraw that poster because it's all wrong. <laughs> Wow, that was my next question, which you just answered is, have you designed posters you have not seen movies for? Uh, I, well, I, I still do from time to occasionally. Like, sometimes Mondo will come to me with a movie which is coming soon and high profile, and you can't say no, because... No, no absolutely you know, not. Um, in fact, one, one which I've kind of got on deck at the moment is Wonder Woman, um, oh. which... I'm excited about um and so in fact there were two posters i was hoping to do for mondo this year i was going to do black widow and i was going to do wonder woman and black widow because of my experience with marvel and the way they cut trailers and the fact they their trailers can sometimes be a bit deceptive um in fact in terms of the infinity war poster the big problem was uh hulk features quite prominently in the trailer and he's not in the movie so the fact that i had hulk kind of like front and center had to go um, and I had like Bucky front and center and Black Widow front and center and like Thor in the original poster was more kind of an afterthought and then I saw the movie and it's like wow this really is kind of like Thor's story yeah. and like Bucky gets like a couple lines even Cap's not in it that much and like all these characters who I'd made the prominent focus of the poster based on the trailers weren't it wasn't right which is why I had to redo it um, so yeah, so with Black Widow, I, I kind of said to the guys, look, I'll do it, but I want to wait until I've seen the movie. And obviously it's been pushed back and back, so that's not happening. Um, Wonder Woman, I think originally we were aiming to have it for San Diego or maybe release. I'm not sure. It was There was definitely a, like a date we had in mind. But with that, I'm going to try and do something quite um, like iconic. So it's not going to be necessarily referencing too much specific events in the movie it's just because i just kind of want to draw an amazing like badass action shot of wonder woman um i kind of have two ideas because she has that like, great gold like uh winged armor yeah and so i want to do the poster twice and i want to do one version with her and just like a regular get up and then one with her and, and do like a variant um there's a there's some amazing gold paper that i i found for the detective pikachu poster i did last year 
which is the most incredible paper I've ever printed on. And so I want to do the Wonder Woman poster on that paper, just in that armor. I just want to do like an, an awesome action shot of her, like swinging the lasso and, you know, so I don't feel like I need to see the movie for that because that's not the kind of poster I'm trying to make. But, but I think anything which is going to have some sort of narrative to it, which I think is something which my illustration work tends to have a lot of, I have to, I kind of have to see it or at least have a very detailed breakdown. Um, I did a poster for Deadpool. Uh, the first one must've been like five or six years ago now, which they sent me the script so that I could see like roughly the tone of the film, but there, there wasn't any footage at the time. Um, but you know, that that's the kind of situation where I, I don't mind not seeing the film, but yeah, as a rule, you kind of got to see it. Yeah. Did you get how kind of sarcastic and funny that that film is from the script? You were able to kind of... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the okay, script okay, is... Okay. Okay. I, I would say certainly the um, the copy of the script I looked at, which I assume is a shooting script, was yeah. like 95% there. Like okay. you could totally get it from the... And it was quite surprising because it was not what I was expecting at all. Yeah. Um, and then to read it, I was like, oh, okay. Oh, this is going to be fun. You know, this is this feels like a pretty pretty solid movie. Um, let me ask one more question and then I'll, I'll let Blake tap yeah, back sure. in. Um, I know I, I read, I think from your Instagram um, that tr you really enjoyed uh, doing the poster for Tron, that that was uh, like a movie that you loved yeah. as a kid. And I'm wondering, yeah, like, you know, it's fine if the answer is Tron, but like, is there one uh, poster you designed that like really kind of hit home, like with some, you know, nostalgia from a, a movie or film that you really loved as a kid? Oh, that's a tough one. Like I haven't, I haven't done a huge amount of um, like movies from the past, which I was really into aside from Star Wars. Oh, which, you know, it's Star Wars. Um, everyone wants to do it. And I, I was, I was pretty happy with the solution I had for it. Um, I'm doing an Empire Strikes Back poster at the moment, which feels better in every way than the Star Wars one. And I'm very I've been working on it for the last two years on and off and it still feels like right. So I'm good with that. But I think Tron really is, is one of those uh, of the posters I've done this year, at least it's certainly one of my favorite things. Um, it just, everything came together and it's, you know, I mean, it was for, it was for Tron legacy, which is a beautiful looking film with a beautiful soundtrack it is. and a sort of so, so, you know, plot, but I think it's a film that, everything visual about it is a triumph. So having the opportunity to like play in that sandbox is just incredible. And then I'll ask one more question and then I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, jump sure. back in here. Like um, so you've also, you know, designed um, posters for, for like, you know, fish for concerts, um, mm -hmm. for books. I I'm wondering if you're designing like a book cover, um, mm -hmm. I guess, how does your, your, process differ than you know if a movie poster obviously i'm assuming you're reading the book but like is yeah. there anything else any distinct differences there um in terms of the design process it's pretty it's a pretty similar process um i think with everything i do i tend to like um i tend to try and experience the thing that it's for so if it's for a band i'll listen to the music if it's for a book i'll read the book if it's for a movie i'll watch the movie and then my process is usually pretty much the same it's trying to find I think for things like books, because you you have less um, kind of kind of existing visual information to go from. So, like a movie, you know what uh, Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth look like, and if you want to put them on the poster, you kind of have to draw them so they look like that. Um, but with a book, there's a lot more, uh, which is kind of open to my interpretation in terms of how how I draw a character, and then you start thinking, okay, well, maybe I don't want to actually draw the character too specifically because then that, that could take something away from the reader. Yeah. Um, and then it becomes more about trying to communicate like a theme, especially with books, I think, because you don't have that existing visual language to fall back on, you start trying to, or certainly I start trying to find like what the themes of the story are or what, they'll normally be like one key moment and I'll get to it. And as soon as I get to it, it's like, oh, that's it. That's what the cover's going to be. And it may not actually be a direct and literal representation of something that happens in the book, but it will be an image which speaks to the theme and speaks to the kind of the nature of the characters. It's, it's difficult to describe. Um, it's, it's very much a case of when I have the idea, I know, and then it's pretty easy. And the problem comes when he gets to the end of the book and you haven't hit that moment. And that's, that's happened a couple of times, not too many, like, like touch wood, not too many. 
but uh, yeah, it's that's when it's when it gets difficult when you um, when you don't have that sort of moment of realization. Um, but you know, fingers crossed, there's always one in one. But there's always something that jumps out, and that that's the thing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, Blake, hop back in. Matt, thank you so much. It was awesome. No worries, man. Questions, appreciate it. Yes. Hello again. Hi. Um, yeah, the movie poster stuff and music stuff, I think is fascinating. I've honestly, like, I've been in the sports world focused just on sports athletes, like one of one paintings for the athletes themselves mm -hmm. uh, for the last like three years. And then Tops reached out and it was like such an easy transition for me to go, you know, mm. painting other athletes, which I think is awesome. What, um, how many cards do you have left? Five? uh four and i've i've drawn one of them already so um my sandy uh sandy kilfax uh kofax kufax yeah kofax yeah Kofax. okay so my sandy kofax card hasn't come out yet but i did it after tony Gwynn because i'm not sure whether maybe i misread the schedule or the schedule changed right um, but it was on my to-do list so i did it mm -hmm. and then it didn't come out so it's still it's still like it's finished it's drawn um so i think i've got to do i'm trying to think i've got left i haven't done mike trout yet nice so that's good. that's sort of there yeah uh, and i know what i'm gonna do for it but i've just gotta like realize it um i think dwight gooden i haven't done yet and i'm just scrolling through now looking at the other cards trying to remember who who's left to do uh oh willie mays so nice. yeah, I've got Willie Mays, Dwight Gooden, Mike Trout, Sandy Koufax. Um, and it's, it's quite an interesting, it's going to be an interesting three to have because um, Dwight Gooden and Willie Mays are kind of like straight up portraits, which I've kind of had, I think those have been some of my favorite cards where I've just focused on like the face. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Mike Trout one is like, it's dynamic and it's a sort of fairly iconic card and it also is the one that you know with all the ups and downs we've had in this series it's the one that people are really collecting totally. so i feel like there's there's some pressure there to get that one like absolutely yeah. right you spot know on. spot yeah. on yeah what is um what does the design process look like for you are you doing this on like an i like a tablet with a like yeah, a, like an iPad and an Apple Pencil or something like that. Uh, yeah, I use a, a Wacom uh, Cintiq. In fact, I'll, I'll put it here. It's my little screen that I draw on. Um, yeah. It's not very big. Like it's it's not that much bigger than an iPad, uh, but it's it's great. It's like it's it's what I love to draw on. Um, and it's uh, so usually what I'll do is um, it kind of varies card by card, but generally I sort of open up a new document and kind of throw the original card in there mm -hmm. and then I kind of start cutting and pasting to sort of move elements around the page so for the um Bob Gibson one that I just finished I wanted his head to be sort of bigger mm -hmm. I wanted to keep that circle in there so it was a case of like copying and pasting and sort of just moving elements around the page until they sort of uh, until I have a kind of like collage um, and then I'll also start bringing in like photo references for um, the other elements. So the uh, the Bob Gibson's got like a bunch of cardinals around him. Mm -hmm. So I found a whole bunch of photo refs of cardinals and kind of cut and pasted them into the collage as well. And then some of the shapes, those cardinals weren't right. So some of the cardinals are made up of like two or three different birds that I've copy pasted bits of, you mm -hmm. know, wing and head together to get like a shape that feels good then it's uh working out like blocking in roughly where the type's gonna go um i think with with gibson i did the type after the fact um but some of them like mark mcguire i needed to figure out the right font and the right placement so that it all felt correct you know um mm -hmm. same with the uh the don mattingly with that kind of yankees dropping down the middle like i had to put that in before i started drawing just to make sure that i didn't that draw it it. yeah yeah to make sure yeah. there's room for everything yeah um and in fact nolan ryan was in fact no nolan ryan i did i did backwards so i did the portrait first and then mm -hmm. kind of panicked and didn't know how to do the typography mm -hmm. uh so there's there's like four or five different versions of nolan ryan sitting on my hard drive with different type treatments because i just couldn't yeah couldn't figure out how the type would work on that yeah 
Do you ever uh, tease out any of the, uh, the unprinted versions? Um, I think I posted my Tony Gwynn that I didn't end up releasing because I did it completely differently. Um, as a rule, I tend not to because they're often very unfinished. Like I, I, th I feel like if I finish something and I decide not to use it, I'm okay with sharing it. Mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes, the reason that I, you know, the reason that I had four different versions of Nolan Ryan's typography is they just didn't look very good. Mm -hmm. And there's that little bit of me that doesn't really want to share stuff that I don't yeah. mind sharing process. So like I'll share, I'll share sketches and kind of work in progress. But if it's just kind of shitty, I don't, I don't want to like just put it out there. Yeah. Um, like uh, I feel like I talk enough on social media about how, you know, art is hard and, you know, you're never going to get it right the first time, but right. I don't really want to share too many of my errors in that sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Looking at your cards, like I'm just thinking about like the upcoming Willie Mays. Like I love the Jackie Robinson, I think is just so cool. And I feel like the Jackie and Willie cards, original cards kind of remind me of each other. Yeah. So any... I mean, that's, it's so cool, man. I'm kind of thinking something. I really like the Jackie Robinson. I feel like that one has, I'm just going to scroll through now just to check, but I think that one has my favorite typography of any of my cards. It's like, uh, uh, I don't know, it reminds me of like Las Vegas or, yeah. or like a game show or something. Yeah, it's that very kind of like 1950s, um, kind of mid-century modern which is you know it's a kind of design movement that you know i'm a designer i'm i'm going to like mid-century modern stuff because we all do yeah. um, and so it was it was a really nice to have that opportunity to like throw some of that in there and like the background pattern on that is like a real nod to like little atom patterns and um like eames design and stuff like that which you know is stuff that i love um so yeah i think I think the fact it was a fifties card, like it really, it really hit. I'm just going to look quickly, look and see what year the, um, the Willie Mays is from. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah. So the Dwight Gooden's 85. So I'll be going full eighties on that. Oh, great. Willie Mays is 52. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, maybe I will do it like Jackie. Yeah. I love I it. Like I would, mean, yeah. I think that'd be a good fit. Great. So that's uh, that's like, and and I just think like the layout of the original card and those cards are similar, which makes sense that they're both. Yeah. Era. Yeah. There's some really nice kind of design, like page decoration on the Willie Mays, which it would be good to like nod to, in the in the design of the cards. Like yeah. I think I think even where I've um, not stuck too rigidly to the uh, the original design, I always try and like reference something of the. Of the card itself you know in terms of like where the typography sits or like a little drop in a logo here or there like the um mm -hmm. the bob gibson like i tried to get that little card little cardinals triangle in there somewhere just because it's such a beautiful little old-fashioned piece of design um in fact I'll, I'll send it over to you in a sec so you can uh so you can yeah. see it oh hang on i can send it to you on uh, on facebook while we're talking so you know what i'm talking yeah. about hang yeah. on a second this wow this is gorgeous thank you oh my gosh this is amazing <laughs> Dude, this little, it, might, it might be my favorite one of yours. It might have, it's, it's going to have, the, I know it's going to happen. It's going to have the lowest print run of everything because I now have noticed a direct correlation between the shit that I love and the print run just like absolutely <laughs> angry. That's um, all right, man. Well, I'm in for 10 of those. Those are gorgeous. Awesome. Um, the, one that, the one that got me was um, Ichiro. Mm -hmm. I was so happy with that. And... Uh, like it didn't, it didn't, it didn't sell like none, but that one to me felt like a real gamble because I, so I'd actually drawn it all in kind of like, um, kind of very denim -y, washed out blue tones and it was fine, but it just wasn't quite hitting for me. And I started doing this thing where I just like started throwing adjustment layers in Photoshop, just on top, on top, on top, and then started throwing some gradients on. I was like, ah, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And it suddenly, suddenly, it just kind of like revealed itself to me. Yeah. And I was looking at this thing going, oh, oh, that's it. That's how it should look. And I had yeah. to be so careful not to like, not to touch anything because I had like seven different adjustment layers. And it's like, if I right. turn off even one of these, I'm going to forget which one it was and how to get it back to here. Right, right. So essentially then had to save it out flat 
and there were still some elements I had to draw on it. So I had to save it flat and then kind of like draw more on top of it. Yeah. Because I was so scared of losing whatever it was, that like little bottled lightning that I'd captured. Um, yeah. I was really worried that like people were just going to hate it because I think, I think with that one, that felt like a real um, departure from what I'd done even up to that point. Mm -hmm. Because I think everything up to that had been quite sort of block flat colors and that one was like a sort of looking like a foil card mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it's that and mariano rivera as well I was like about those, to say, it works really well with like the mo i think also with the don and mark mcguire um hmm. i think all i mean it's awesome i think as i mean i do that with with illustrations a lot like i'll not necessarily stuff that will get me in trouble but i'll sneak in stuff which is like um a nod to like something my friend said or like I'll put my, my mates as like a background character in something or I'll just work on these little design elements which are purely there to like please me right because it, it kind of keeps interesting you know sort of you want it you want it to be a a fun process while you're doing it and chucking in these little like goofy details sort of I think that's what makes it for me being able to like throw random shit like that in and it just kind of I don't know it gives it some personality Mm -hmm. like it stops it feeling especially with a a project like this which is so kind of long in terms of working on it for a year like i'm trying to find like nice ways to keep it still feeling fresh and still feeling interesting totally totally that's awesome Man, just admiring all them i love the cow too uh awesome. yeah Again with the like the wings yeah that was the one that took the longest I think yeah. of, of all of the cards I've done, that was the, that was a real backbreaker. That took sort of five or six days of drawing, I think. Wow. Um, Cause most of my cards take a sort of day or two to draw. Like I'll, I'll spend a, an hour or two sketching and kind of trying to come up with ideas. And then the actual process of drawing it will take me a day or two, but Cal, Cal took the best part of a week mm -hmm. uh, and totally worth it. And yeah. so happy when I opened the box and I had the gold one of one, Oh, sick. You got the gold yeah. of that one. Yeah. I wow, was that's amazing. Especially when, like you're not ordering a ton of cards. So that's, mm. that's a treat. No, the one thing I actually I'm pretty excited about is um, I've got APs of or the tops APs. And I've got an AP of every single card coming in. Yeah. And I'm kind of conflicted because part of me wants to hang on to a complete set mm -hmm. of the APs. I think you should. Oh, yeah, I know. It's just, it's going to be like a, you know, 2000 bucks on my credit cards at the moment. Yeah. Um, but then on the other hand, I was sort of thinking like, it doesn't, and I think this is part of me not being, um, the whole world of baseball cards being new to me is that I don't have any kind of like preconceived attachments to say like the one of ones or the one of sure. 20. Like what yeah. really matters to me is the base card like that's the thing that i kind of signed up to draw and that's the thing i love like i like i even i wouldn't even be that bothered if they weren't in cases like i just just having the card is the thing for me you know so i don't know i'm i'm tempted maybe to like throw them in as an auction and just like put a complete set of ap's on ebay and mm. you know what maybe someone will get like a crazy deal on them i don't know i'm I, i'll kind of well, if you me do, I, i'll bid on them Okay. Okay. I would Tommy love wants to do something with them. I mean, I think that if you do that, you should sign them. Oh yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think having a signed maybe, like hand embellish them a little bit. I, I don't know. Like I think yeah. like, yeah, I've got a full AP set too. And like, there's nothing, there's no amount of money that someone could pay me to take it off my hands. Okay. Just, okay. But also like I'm in a different situation where like I grew up collecting baseball cards. Mm. A lot of the cards that are in this set, were came out during the era that I was collecting cards with my dad. So like remaking like the Mark McGuire card, the Frank Thomas card, the Ken Griffey card. Those are all cards that were like priceless possessions to me as a kid. So now like mm -hmm. having my own stamp on them, like it's just, it's just sentimental. Um, and it's yeah, something definitely. I, would never, I would never think of selling. Uh, I'd have to be in a real dire situation to <laughs> sell off my APs, but um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Could go either way. I mean, I, I get it. If you have like, if you have one of each of the base cards, like you have that moment of history, and um, yeah. you know if that's what matters to you, then then great. And definitely, I mean, if you sold a full set of APs and they were signed and altered in any way, uh, it's 
going to pay your investment that you, you know, you buy, yeah. and you get paid back. I, hold on that. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, when I have them all in hand, I might look at them all together and then just think, Oh, I know I want to keep these because it's a beautiful, a beautiful thing. And like, I'm really looking forward to being able to look at the whole set together. It's been really nice seeing on social media, people who've uh, collected, you know, the whole run, like it, it still blows me away that someone likes my cards because they're, they're not cheap. And like people who are in on this hobby are like buying a lot of cards. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm just hugely grateful that someone likes my design sense enough to, um, to want to like have them all. Like it's that, that's something that's always kind of blown my mind that people collect my work. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have artists who I, I collect work by and I still consider them like, proper artists and I'm just over here doing my thing. So the fact that, that, that people enjoy what I've done enough to, to want to just have the full run is, is really like touching. And that's, that's like one of my favorite things from this whole, whole experience. Yeah. Um, and like, I, I think that those collect, like, first of all, like this set of yours within the top, within tops, like your first set and my first set mm -hmm. uh, as like the years progress. Um, and you know, we, potentially doing more and more and more projects with tops. Yeah. Like this is going to be, this is going to be the set that everyone wants. So yeah. I would, I would hold, <laughs> hold on to that, man. Invest in yourself and your future, yeah. I think, but um, who knows, man, I'm, I'm an optimist and always like betting on myself. Uh, yeah. It doesn't make sense, but that's what we got. Right, man. I mean, you, you've done amazing out of this. Like I've been just completely blown away by the sort of, ascendancy of your your work over this like you know when when people are discussing this on social media like yours is the name that gets kind of bandied around as you know Blake's Blake's doing it Blake's you know he's there for the fans and he's doing amazing art and you know interacting with everyone and like I, I'll admit I got a little bit kind of burned out around the kind of middle of the of the project um just because uh it felt for a while like the focus had just switched to how can we make, how can people who are buying these make money for them? And like, and we've talked about reselling a bit, like I, I get it because, you know, I collect sneakers and I collect art and I collect comics and, you know, I get that you have to buy stuff on the secondary market. Like it's, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, but it, it always strikes me as a bit sad when that becomes the sort of almost like the primary motivator, mm -hmm. like, I, I I got a lot of abuse on Twitter because a comment I'd made in Facebook got taken out of context and posted. Um, and it, I think it came off like I was grumbling about low print runs because they weren't making me enough money. And the point that I was trying to make was that I would rather the print runs were low, but that everyone who's buying them is keeping them for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like we've all, we've all done brilliantly out of this project. Like just from a financial point of view, we've all done way way over what we were expecting to mm -hmm. anything from here on is just like a bonus mm -hmm. and you know i just want to make stuff that people want to own you know and they want to put in their displays and keep in their personal collections that's mm -hmm. that's it for me like that's you know and i think that's also why you know like i said i have less attachment to things like the the ap's and the it's lovely to have the one of one but if i hadn't got one of those i wouldn't have minded because it's, it's all about that base card. It's all about, you know, some, and I hope some, either some parent is going to buy this and their kid is going to see it and think, whoa, what's that? Yeah. Or some kid is going to buy it and it's going to make them want to draw. Mm -hmm. Like there's been a couple of Facebook groups with, um, that I'm, I think you're a member of as well, the, the 2020 Facebook group and people posting up like their own versions of these cards, which is great. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's how I got drawing. Like I saw art that I liked and thought I want to do that. And, yeah. you know, if I, I've said this so many times on so many podcasts and, you know, interviews and whatnot, but like if one thing that I draw, if some kid picks that up and thinks I want to draw and then they go and become an artist because of it, my job is done. Mm -hmm. Because like, let's be honest, illustration doesn't, save the world like people do very worthy jobs and illustration is wonderful and it gives people a lot of joy um 
But if I can change someone's life by them thinking, oh, I want to do this because I want to make a poster that looks like that. I want to make a baseball card that looks like that. Then there's, there's literally nothing better. Yeah. Like my, my daughter, I'm having to be, my eldest, I'm having to be very careful not to get too excited about her drawing because her drawing is incredible. Um, I'm biased because, you know, I'm a dad and I love her, but she's yeah. six and she's drawing better than I did at that age. And I'm just, I'm trying so hard not to like push her to draw mm -hmm. because I want her just to enjoy it. And you know what, if she decides that it's something she wants to do like, you know, 10 years from now properly, that's great. Mm -hmm. And if it's something that she does until she's 10 and then she stops, that is also great. But yeah, getting, getting other people to draw, that's the dream, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I agree, man. I grew up in a very creative household, loved drawing and, and making things as a kid. And my, my parents were very, always very encouraging, um, not in like an overbearing, like pressure way, but always gave me any tools or resources I wanted to like express myself creatively. And I, I have like a very different route to like now being a full-time artist. It's like when yeah. I went to college, my parents were like, they knew that I loved drawing and they, so they were encouraging me to go to art school or at least to like minor in art or at least mm -hmm. to take elective courses and take some art courses. And I kind of like pushed away from that. I did take some elective courses, which ironically were like my only A's I ever got in college. But um, <laughs> like, I had just kind of convinced myself that art wasn't like a viable career. And so I studied economics and like worked in marketing for almost a decade after college. And then I 30, my 30th birthday came around and I'm like, and I want to do something that I love with my life and uh -huh. ended up deciding to paint full time. And now it's like five years later and it's crazy. Like it's like the opposite story of what you hear of like kids might want to go to art school and their parents are like, no, do something like, you know, do an actual career. And like, it was like the opposite for me where my parents were like, go to art school. And I'm like, no, I'm going to do like a real, <laughs> a real job. Um, and here we are, but you yeah. know, I don't have any regrets. I think like the marketing experience that I got, outside of the art world and outside of art schools, like so much, I think more valuable than if I had gone and gotten the same training as everyone else. And so now I have this kind of unique skill set where I'm actually very comfortable, like with the business side of, of my art business and the marketing side. And I think that's where a lot of artists struggle. And yeah, for sure. It's sad, but it's like, if it doesn't matter that much, like if the art is amazing, if, if you're not selling it, it's really hard to keep doing it full time. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like somebody that's really good at selling and marketing can go sell mediocre or average art and to have a thriving business because if you're, you know, getting that cash flow, you can keep doing the art. So yeah, I've been really yeah. lucky. Um, yeah. I mean, your, your, I, I say your art, but like one's art is, it's the sort of culmination of everything that's happened to you till that point to kind of, get you to make to create that work in that way so you know if you'd gone a different route you wouldn't be making the art you are now and you wouldn't be like you say you wouldn't be promoting it in the way you are i mean i i studied advertising um, and graphic design at university i didn't realize that illustration was something you could you could do like i always drew like I, i've been drawing since i was like you know that high and um i didn't know it was a, like a job you could have so i i studied advertising and graphic design and it was only when I finished my degree and I was like, I don't really want to do this job. I don't want to be working advertising um, that I sort of, one of my tutors said, you know, why aren't you studying illustration? I was like, I, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know what illustration was. And like, I just, I graduated in 2002. So it was just when like design blogs were starting to pop up. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there would, there were like, this is going to sound insane, but there were like three design blogs yeah and that was it you know and so i knew that if i got my work on one of those blogs like all the art directors who were kind of savvy and looking at the internet oh, would just my work on there um i think it was a pixel surgeon maybe there was one called design is kinky which is an australian blog i might still be going um and they they featured my work when like i made this crappy website like just after graduating and filled it with stuff that was like, it was so low resolution. It was, it was such a dreadful thing, but um, an art director at Burton Snowboards saw it and just kind of like rang me out of the blue and said, do you want to design some snowboards? And I was like 22. 
That's awesome. And li- living in a shared house, like working in a shoe shop. Yeah. Um, and like, th- I didn't know what was going on. Like this guy from a company that I was, you know, I love Burton stuff and thought their car, their, their, um, their boards were awesome. We were like, I'm like, yes, I guess so. And he kind of quoted this budget at me. I was like, that's more money than I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, and it, I know it's, it's weird because it felt, it feels now easier in some ways to get your work out there because like the democratization of graphic design and illustration in that anyone can subscribe to Photoshop and anyone can get an Instagram and a, I mean, Tumblr's dead and buried, but you know, Tumblr back in the day and a Twitter and a website and, you know, you can build a presence for yourself um, in a way that you couldn't back in 2002 when I graduated. And uh, sorry, my phone's going. Um, Yeah. Like you, you couldn't do that back in 2002. Like you had to send out postcards and you had to ring art directors and say, hi, I'm an illustrator. Do you mind if, um, can I come in and show you, can I come in and show you my book? Right. That's an insane thing to sort of say nowadays. You're going to go in somewhere and show them your portfolio. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was it was kind of harder to get um, your work in front of people. But like, on the other hand, once you got in there, you sort of had an in. Was nowadays it's so much easier to put your work out there. But there's so much like there's so much visual information online. Like you you know you just get lost scrolling through Instagram and it, and it's all great. And uh, I don't know, it's, I think it's, it's wonderful that people don't have to go to college now to be artists. They can just, you know, I mean, back in my day, it was a, uh, it makes me sound old, um, but back in my day, it was like a bootleg copy of Photoshop that my dad had bought when he was working in Hong Kong. Um, and that was the only way he could get it because Photoshop was like a thousand pounds and no, no 21 year olds going to drop a grand on a bit of software. Right. Um, and now, you know, you can subscribe, you can pay 20 bucks a month and get Photoshop and you can just start making stuff. Like you can get an iPad and make all your art on there. It's, mm-hmm. there are so many tools and it's like, it's wonderful, but it, it is tough as well because there's so much competition. Yeah. Wild world, wild world. That we live in. <laughs> I know it's loopy. Like I still count myself lucky every day that I get to do this. Yeah, I mean, and, and in this crowded environment where there's so many artists with, that are ex- insanely talented, the fact that like you and I account for ten percent of the artists that have tops picked uh, is pretty incredible, man. I know, I know. it's. I, I count myself so lucky. That, well, firstly, I get to do this this job at all. Like, I still think one day I'm going to have to get a proper job. <laughs> you know, yeah, something something boring in an office because the illustration dries up. But um, not that, but. I hear <sighs> Fingers crossed, like I'm, I'm not good at anything else. So, you know, it's drawing on nothing for me. Yeah. Um, we'll launch some new autos, man. Let's get, let's get the people. I know that the people that are watching this are going to be wildly like interested after getting to know you to like want to go buy autos. So if you want to like coordinate and do a drop on Friday, I think it would Yeah. Be- you know what? Okay. Let me have a look. Um, so I've got. I've got Brett and Ichiro and Rivera and you know what? I think I've got actually everything up to date apart from Ted Williams. So how many cards is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. What the hell? Let's say Friday I'll drop six, uh, six also cards and, and <laughs> some time between. Them. This, is, this, is, this is, will be really good for you on Friday. I'm going to, I'm going to go sign them now. <laughs> Great. I love to hear it. Um, yeah. So, okay. And, and your website, just so people are watching is, uh, Matt Taylor draws dot co dot UK. Uh, just Matt Taylor dot co dot UK. Oh, Matt Taylor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Matt Taylor draws on Twitter, Instagram, socials, and then Matt Taylor dot co dot UK. Um, I'd oh. honestly say Instagram and Twitter are the best places to follow me. If you want sort of regular update info, okay. uh, my website has a link through to my, um, web shop and my uh twitter and instagram both link through there as well but but twitter i'll actually like shout about it and interact with people and you know talk stuff yeah, my website's just you know it's pretty it's got all my movie posters on it but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. no i mean it's, it's gorgeous oh thank you amazing <laughs> i still don't know how to take compliments so i just want to like get under the table when someone says something nice about my work 
No, it's so cool, man. And, and it's also cool to see like, you know, a lot of these movies uh, or like, uh, they're all very different, but like stylistically, I think that like you, you just got a really good style that's like recognizable. I think like at this point, like I, somebody could just show me a piece of work and I would know it's your work without any context. Um, and I think that's like in the type of world we live in where it's so overcrowded and easy to put work out on social media or on the internet. Like that's a really powerful position to be in as an artist. Yeah, I think that's the aim to try and have something as recognizably yours. Um, it's weird. One of the questions I get asked most by people is like, how do you like, what brushes do you use? How do you create this art? And right. unfortunately, like the boring answer at this point is I just kind of do it. Mm -hmm. Like I, it's, it's hard for me to explain how to, how I draw something. It's like, I, I don't know why I see things the way I do in terms of colors and the way that I kind of shade and like put light sources in certain places. It's just, it's just kind of where I've got to, like I've been doing this almost 20 years now. So it's, it's pretty much just like baked in. Um, I just, I draw the way I draw because that's how I draw. Oh, dude, I'm looking at your uh, US <laughs> Open stuff. Sorry, I just got distracted. And I, I was at the US Open uh, in New oh. York. And I saw your work. I like literally, I have photos of it on my phone because I'm like, this oh, cool. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see. Okay, I'm just going to see if I can pull this up real quick. So if I go to places that was up in Flushing. So were those actually printed out like big? Oh, they were huge. Yeah. Oh, I, I assumed that was some fancy. Um, no, they were. They were something. Okay, let's see here. Where is. Uh, I'm gonna try and find this. Where can you show me where? Um, yeah, I'll just come in. Check oh. out Matt's site. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's an amazing Absolutely. low tech way doing it. Um, I bought one of your Roberto Clemente auto cards. I should have brought it in today. It's at my oh. home, so but it looks beautiful. So oh, dude, if there's any others you want, just like hit me up, drop me a message on Facebook or Twitter, and I'll I'll send some over to you. You are too that's kind. Amazing. You are too kind. You um, know what? That's one of the best things about this is like. And it, it's, it's very much happens in posters as well is we all just kind of trade stuff with each other. Yeah. Like, because, because we get, you know, posters and stuff like I get essentially for free. So I never feel bad about sending someone like a copy of something they want it. Cause it means down the line, I can just sort of, I can hit them up and go, yeah, can you, can you sort me out with that one? Because I really want it. <laughs> Have you ever read the book, The Alchemist before? Ooh, great. Uh, I think I have. Who's it by? It rings a bell. Hello, Quello. Oh yes. Yeah, I have. Oh, okay. A great book. Well, we're definitely going to send you a copy of that book because that's Blake's favorite book. And he like splatter painted on a bunch of them. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll throw in one of my favorite books as well. Um, great. Thanks, man. I will trade them for some cards for you. Thank you. You are yes. too kind. You are too kind. You know what? One of the, one of the best little, um, uh, I'm trying to think the best way to describe it, like side effects of this project is, so I like, I collect sneakers a lot. And um, I, I kind of make it known on social media that I'm after like certain shoes. So, like if I can't get them, can someone help me out? And there's a, a dude who I've met through this, who's been collecting my cards, who um, picked up the Union Air Jordan 4s uh, back in the spring or back in the summer. And I missed them. And he, he let me have them for retail, which like they're, they're selling for like 850 bucks a pair. Wow. Wow. And it was just like, and it, you know, he said, can you sign one of my Chiro cards? I'll send it in the box and can you sign it and send it back? I'm like, yes, 100% yes. I mean, yeah. and it's like, it's really, that's, that's also the reason I tend to hang on to um, like copies of cards and posters and stuff is so that I can trade it for other things. You know, there's yeah. a, a piece of art comes out like one or like some sneakers like it's, it's kind of a standing um, standing arrangement now that if there's, a, if there's a pair of shoes come out that I want, I can't get, I will absolutely trade them for like that poster or this or yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Sneakerheads, you heard it here. If there's a pair of sneakers that Matt wants, just just hit him up on Twitter or Instagram and yeah. uh, it'll be a good trade for you. Yeah, Matt, this is going out, this is oh, going out Friday, isn't it? It is. Uh, okay, so it's the Off-White Air Jordan 5s are dropping, I uh, think, 
think on Thursday. Ooh. Yeah, dropping on Thursday. So okay. uh, by the time this goes out, I may or may not have got them. So if you visit my Twitter, there will be a fairly <laughs> statement as to whether I have got them or not. Uh, US 10.5, if anyone gets a pair and wants to move That's them on, wants to, wants to trade them for signed cards or like signed cards and cash or posters, Ooh. all good. I love it. A little bit of everything. What is your favorite pair of sneakers of all time? That's a great question. Oh, um, hmm, that's a good question. I'm going to go get them. They're just over there. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. They're a bit beat up. Oh, I take so many photos. You do take a lot of photos. I may have even actually I taken know. a photo of this at the US Open because yeah. I was all, well, actually, was I? Here we go. Okay. Oh, is the, was oh, this oh one? Uh, Mars Yard sneaker. So they were an insanely small edition. They're designed by uh, Tom Sachs, who's an American conceptual artist whose work is incredible. But he did a, a kind of capsule collection for Nike, which was uh, shoes which would, or like shoes and clothes which would be worn to a um, to Mars, like to, on a Mars expedition. And so they're designed in a way that they're basically indestructible. Like they use um, the the toe box is made of materials which is from like the parachutes that stop uh, the the space shuttle pods from burning up on re-entry and everything about them is like a, a considered design for a shoe that's practical on on Mars um, and I love them so much and to buy a pair now they're they're between like two and three grand to get a, a dead stock pair wow. and I managed to get them I managed to get them a retail like I won a raffle which is incredible and I've worn them for the last three years and I'm kind of glad that I'd broken them in a lot by the time they started going up in value because I think if I knew they were worth three grand I wouldn't wear them anymore but <laughs> I live in hope that they'll one day do like another another edition but there's only ever been like one colorway and it, they're the only ones they are like Nike have never reissued them. Do you have a favorite sneaker designer? That's a good question. Oh, I mean, Tinker Hatfield, because everyone knows Tinker Hatfield, mm -hmm. and you know he's he's undisputed as one of the great, you know, all-time greats of design. Um, I forget the name of. Oh, I'm gonna have to look it up now. Uh, who designed the Air Max ninety five? Uh, Italian designer, I think it was. Coming up blank. Uh, Sergio Lozano, who designed the Air Max ninety five as well, okay. is pretty pretty damn impressive because that shoe like when i was like 15 16 um yeah and he worked on the uh the nike acg weight range as well which is like hands down my favorite like capsule of stuff because it's just like bright and 90s and like i can wear it when i go hiking up on the hills which you know is great everyone else is wearing this sort of very very kind of like plain <laughs> like plain sensible waterproof cortex jackets and i've got like fluorescent yellow leggings and my bright colored sneakers just like one go hi guys <laughs> just look like i'm very ill prepared for actually being up on the downs but it's all really good like uh good hiking stuff yeah so i'm um, unfortunately i'm coming up blank finding those pictures but um i do reckon yeah. so did you collaborate with that with uh, jason atienza yes um i didn't actually get to work with jason directly um i did it through a uh an agency called loyal casper who yeah. are based out of brooklyn i think yeah um, they got in touch with uh my agent yeah uh, and and basically it was quite a quick turnaround project so they asked me to essentially just design like five character illustrations or four, yeah. uh, four character illustrations and then Jason designed background elements. And then I think the team at Loyal Casper then did some graphic design sort of over the top of them. So it was really interesting because I, I essentially was providing them with like design assets that they right. could then do stuff with. Um, right. But I was blown away by like the finished, the finished product was amazing. It's and so good. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a really fun one to work on that because it was a very, very tight deadline. But like weirdly, there was there was almost no um no revisions from the client like they signed it off pretty much as i sent it in i think i think fedra maybe i had to no fedra i redrew because i wasn't happy with it like i sent it in and then and in fact that's happened with that's the only other time that i redrew for tops i did a tony Gwyn card, mm -hmm. sent it in 
I wasn't happy with it and said, can I do this again? Because I, I don't like it anymore. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was, it was really, it was a really fun one that, um, and, and then to see it on like YouTube and TV was, I mean, they were like big, big, like it was like a billboard, but it was like, right. Yeah. On, like the wooden walkway as you're walking like to kind of the area where all the courts are. Um, yeah. It was awesome. Unfortunately, oh. I take way too many photos on my phone. So <laughs> I've come up blank finding them, but like, I mean, that, that was a super inspiring thing, especially like that was right when I moved to New York. And like, I'm like, I need to be doing stuff like this because like sports was my thing. Um, it was so prominent, so awesome. Um, and I remember because I'm friends with Jason and I recognized kind mm -hmm. of his part, his part on it. And I, the next time I saw him, I was like, dude, that was amazing. He's like, oh, it was a collab with uh, another artist, which turns out to be you, which is so <laughs> sick. Yeah, it's, it suddenly becomes a very small world. Like yeah. everyone knows everyone. I think yeah. it's illustration is a pretty... Yeah, a pretty small, a pretty small community. I mean, certainly the um, the kind of poster community is we all know each other. Um, so it's and it's been really nice, kind of getting to know a bunch of like other artists through twenty twenty as well. Like um, I chat a little bit with Tyson, who seems like just the mm -hmm. loveliest dude. Um, I really want some of Ermsey's work. Like I'm annoyed that I missed his Pink Panthers in the bin bags. Yeah, that's just sick. Great. Yeah, I wish I bought one of those. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm just, I'll just keep an eye on his website now. So as soon as something new drops, I'm just on it in a flash. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, and it's like, I still, I, I consider myself very lucky to have been asked because, you know, there's there's guys like, um, like Grotesque, who I've been following his work for years and years and years. A lot of the kind of amazing design work he did for Nike is stuff that like really heavily inspired me. Um, and Sophia Chang as well, who's, I, I just, I love her work so much. And when, um, when I first got pitched the project, like top sent it through to my agent, like here are the artists we're thinking of working with. And I was like, well, and me, are you sure? <laughs> like, I, I mean, I didn't say that to them, but I, I remember I definitely said to my agent, I was like, are you sure? Like they definitely want me to do this. Yeah. Uh, I think everyone feels a bit like that, like when you're presented with a list of people you're working alongside. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's a, it's such a, it's such a great roster, and like, I, I really hope Tops do more art mm -hmm. cards because mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, with whatever's happened with the sort of, um, uh, the kind of sales side of it, you know, those huge swings in in um, in terms of print runs. Like, I think from a creative point of view, it's been faultless. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's definitely artists I like more than others. Like not everything is to my tastes, but I don't think there's any artist who's like phoned it in or right. has like not like really put their all into it. And you can really tell how much the artists all care about the project. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's like, it's different and it's, in fact, you know what? There was a, a chat on Twitter yesterday, which I think we were both tagged in, which I was going to chime in on. And um, like someone was just commenting that that like their Twitter feed is now artists they follow on yeah. as a result of this. And yeah. you know, I I retweet lots of art that I like on on my Twitter feed, and you know, hopefully people who follow me have now discovered like say the Mondo guys, and you know artists that we all love that aren't part of the project but are now sort of like in this sort of growing sphere of of new art and mm -hmm. i mean yeah man i'm i'm excited i can't wait yeah. well dude i'm so glad that we got to finally chat uh yeah. i'm sorry it took so long but it's everything works out how it's supposed to man i'm stoked yeah. that everyone that watches is going to be stoked also just a reminder everyone so matt just released today when you guys watch this on friday a bunch of new artists autographs. They're all very limited. So you got to go get them ASAP. And it's matttaylor.co.uk. Yeah, there's going to be, I would say, t no more than 12 of each. Wow. I think because I really scale back. Gonna, I, I honestly think that all of those are going to sell out while this is playing. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to put them up for sale. Um, they will be on sale by the time this goes out. But what I'll do is I'll put them up just before I go to bed. So that will be uh, probably midnight UK time. So that's going to be around about 7 p.m. in the US. 
Okay. Um, and what I'll probably do is I won't shout about it on Twitch or Instagram. So yeah, just, be up. just promote it the next day. I think you'll, yeah. you'll get like, I mean, I, don't know, I have an amazing, uh, we have an amazing community within the Thompson mm. Project. and A lot of them tune into this. And I think that I'm going to promote and I'll create some graphics for this too and send it to you in advance so you can say like, mm -hmm. tune in, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I think we're going to have a great audience tuning in and I expect those to be gone by the time you wake up the next day. That'd be a lovely way to start my Saturday. I <laughs> know. Uh, I think so, man. Well, I appreciate it. Anything else you want to uh, leave, uh, say, get across, promote? I don't think so. I mean, like I haven't got, um, this year has been a bit, weird in terms of like stuff coming out and i don't really have a lot of stuff coming out apart from apart from tops because all the movies i was doing posters for have been delayed and you know there's so there's not a lot so um i'm just thank you so much for like having me on and of course i'm glad to be part of this kind of extended tops artist family now it's yeah. uh, long may it continue absolutely thank you man i appreciate it and also guys don't forget get the bob gibson card which is out on tops also, my George Brett should be out on tops by now. So go get those. And yeah, thank you guys all for watching and stay awesome.